as many content creators online would have you believe. Like even personal finance gurus like Graham Stephan, who critiques people's spending, discusses side hustles, and shows you how to save more money, his primary wealth building tool is YouTube, a business that's not predicated on fixed hours worked. King Money. Now the stuff we teach here, and have for almost 30 years, is proven. What's up, you guys? It's Graham here. So we got to take a moment and talk about what's going on in the stock market, because as we're finishing up the week, stocks are really Personal finance channels like Graham Stephan or Dave Ramsey are great for learning how to work on your consumption side of the equation. But if there was one thing I wish they spoke more about, it would be their ability to make money. And I understand why they don't do this. It's easier to reduce your expenses in the amount that you consume than it is to increase your income. When speaking to a mass audience, giving the advice that will work for most people is typically the best choice. We see that there are entire communities built up around focusing on frugality. The FIRE community is one example of this, a movement that adopts the strategy of living extremely frugally, saving and investing as early as possible, with the intentions of retiring as early as possible. Minimalists also share a similar view to the FIRE community, although more deep-rooted in philosophical positions about the world and materialism at large. People like Graham Stephan or Dave Ramsey promote strategies that fall in the spectrum of living frugally, saving a lot of money and investing in the long run. And there's nothing inherently wrong with this strategy. It works for a wider range of people with varying degrees of income. But let's be honest, Graham Stephan doesn't rely on cutting coupons or living an incredibly frugal lifestyle to be making $100,000 to $200,000 a month from YouTube. Nor does Dave Ramsey rely on these strategies to have an estimated net worth of $55 million. These people are utilizing a means of production at mass scale. At the end of the day, a lot of people say one thing online, but move shysty in real life, not really practicing what they are preaching. Do you honestly think Graham is spending time doing all the side hustles he discusses in his videos? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. When previous gurus were hyper-focused on ramming you through their sales funnel until you bought a course. Here's the real problem I see with today's breed of financial gurus. They've added a layer of transparency, which ironically disguises the fact that they're still ramming you through their sales funnel. Their sales conversions are more reliant on video click-through rates and retention times instead of getting you to sign up for their courses. That's why Graham's channel is largely loaded with clickbaity videos where he prognosticates for 15 minutes before concluding with something like... No one knows what the markets are going to be doing a week, a month, or a year from now, so just don't listen to it and just continue investing. These channels preach to the lowest common denominator because YouTube rewards them for it. They seek to boost that click-through rate and retention time because it increases their ad revenue. So the best way to do that is to craft vague advice for as large an audience as possible. So the more successful they become, the less useful their advice is to you. Wait, but Derek, what is your point? I think there's a lurking danger here. Just like 2008, I'm getting these vibes that financial gurus commanding their disciples to use the same tactics everywhere will lead to some dangerous market outcomes. Although the lending environment and pandemic set the stage for certain market behaviors, it's financial gurus who popularize and proliferate successful tactics until they don't work anymore. And you should be especially wary if the gurus stopped doing these tactics themselves and started spending more time preaching on YouTube. Think of it this way. Do you think it's better to buy into a stock when everyone has realized that it's undervalued and started buying it? Or do you think the returns would have been better for you before they made the videos about it with hundreds of thousands of views? Herd mentality in the real estate market is similarly dangerous. In 2008, the non-existing lending restrictions enabled no money down home buying, but financial gurus provided the instruction manual to millions of hopeful speculators. Today, we're in the middle of one of the biggest economic shocks in history. A lot of housing markets are trading at all-time highs, but millions can't pay rent and might get evicted. Do you think it's safe to use pre-COVID investment tactics that all these gurus are preaching? Actually, they're just saying, even though national trends can have a small influence on price, it is not the end-all be-all. Instead, all you need to really know is that you only buy a home that you can afford, that you intend to live in long-term without selling. Can you tell somebody, I wanna meet your mother? Even though sometimes if I do, you know you do want. I cannot wait till the east side and the west side gonna know.